Welcome to part two of the tutorial on how to build a WordPress member directory. The aim of the tutorial is to teach you how to build a directory of members so that people visiting your website can find your members who might be consultants or staff, employees, whatever you want really. So it's a list of people that people can use to find um, each other. So in part one, I showed you how to create a custom post type to store each of your members. And I showed you how to create different fields of information to store about your members, such as categories, custom fields, tags, and taxonomies. And we then added these three members that you can see here. So at the end of part one, we had uh, a, all the back end side of things set up and we'd added some members. And in part two now, I'm going to show you how to create the actual front end database on your public website, which people can use to search for and find and view your members. We're going to do this using a WordPress plugin called Post Table Pro, and I'll put a link of where to get that onto the screen now. So you can see that I've got Post Table Pro installed on my website. So you need to get the plugin, install it, activate it, and then enter your license key. And when you get the plugin, you'll receive instructions on how to do that. So once you've got it installed and activated, then you can follow along with this part two tutorial. What we're going to do is create a normal page in WordPress and put a table of our members on it. Let's do that now. We go to Pages, Add New, and I'm going to call it Member Directory. And on the page, you can put whatever content you like. You can put an introduction, you can divide it into sections. You don't have to just have your member directory on that page, uh, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to write a short code on the page. So first we open square brackets and then we write posts underscore table. This is how we use the Post Table Pro plugin that we just installed and that displays um, a list of posts on your site. But you don't just want to display normal WordPress posts which would be in here. What you want is to display members which is a custom post type. To do that, you add a space after post table and you write post underscore type equals, and then within quotation marks, members. Now, members here is the slug which I created for my custom post type in part one. If your members custom post type is called something else, has a different slug, then you would enter this here instead of members. And then I'm gonna close the square bracket. So this is my complete short code and I will publish the page and have a look at it. So I'm gonna view the page and here it is. So just like that, I just entered a short code and I have a member directory page with a table of my three members. Now that looks okay, but as you can see, some of the information isn't that relevant. In a members directory, I'm not likely to want to have an author. Um, that's just not how you use a member directory that's more suitable for posts in a blog. And similarly, I don't probably want to date. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is change your columns so that it's more relevant to a member's directory and displays the different fields of information about your members, which we created in part one. So we go back to our short code on the edit page screen and we add a space and we want to write the word columns equals and then within quotation marks, we want to list various fields, which each of which will be a column. And the documentation for Post Table Pro um, tells you all the possible fields that you can use and the correct syntax to use. But I'm going to give you an example now of common columns that you would have in a members directory table. We've got image. Um, that will display the featured image for each of my members, which I use to upload their profile photo. We're going to write title. That's the box at the top of each member screen and I use that to record their name. So that would show their profile photo followed by their title, which is quite common in a member's directory. I also want excerpt. Now that is the short amount of text which I entered for each member uh, instead of the long description which you would put in this area for your members posts. Uh, because um, what I'm going to do is have the long description on the individual member profile page and just a shorter excerpt on the main members directory page. Next we're going to have categories. 
and that is the categories that we um, ticked, uh, which you can use categories how you want, but um, you saw in part one that I use categories to display the country in which my members live. So um, I think I entered England, UK, US, um, sorry, UK, US, Germany and France just as examples. So that's categories. I also added some custom fields and I added one for phone and one for email and I'm going to add the phone one here just to show you how it works. So to add a custom field you separate all the columns with commas and then you write CF colon to tell Post Table Pro that you are adding a column for a custom field now and then you add the slug of your custom field which is phone in my case. Um, and I'm also going to give you an example of a taxonomy, a custom taxonomy, which I created for members. Um, you might remember in part one that I created one called Levels, where I have um, beginner, intermediate or advanced for each member. So I'm going to display that by writing tax colon and then I'm going to write level because that is the slug for my custom taxonomy. And then I close the quotation marks. So I've got a list of columns equals and within quotation marks, I've got a list of all the columns that I want to display in the table. Um, there's no gaps between them, but they are separated by commas. And we click update. And then we're going to go back to the member directory. I'm going to refresh the page now and you can see that the columns have changed. So we've got image, title, summary, categories, phone and levels. Now, you probably wouldn't want to call these columns that. This is the default wording, but you can rename any of your columns or even leave the column header of any of them blank if you want to. So uh, let's rename categories to country because that's what we're using our cat categories for. So we go back to our page and we're going to write after categories, put another colon and write country. Actually, I need to capitalize it because that's how it will appear. Um, so we've, after any column that you want to rename, you put a colon and then you write what you want to call the column header. So we'll just update the page and I'll show that to you now. So we refresh and see how it's changed to country. Now, um, already the table is quite interactive. Um, you can click on any column header to search by that column. You can click on a category or tag to just filter for post by that category. You can click the reset button to perform a reset. There's also a search box. So if I wanted to search for beginners, see it's instantly done a search for beginners. And I'll reset that. And if you have lots of posts, you can also choose how many appear on the page. These are all things that your, um, your users can do uh, when they view your members directory. And you can also hide any elements. You can hide this at the bottom. You can hide this, you can hide this. And the documentation shows you all of that. But I think my members directory would be even better if I had a filter drop down above the table, allowing people to filter by, let's say, country or levels or something like that. So that if they want to know, if they're in the UK and they want to view all the members in the UK, they can instantly filter through a drop down. So let's add that drop down now. We go back to the edit page screen and at the end of my short code, after the list of categories, of columns, I'm going to put a space and write filters equals and then in quotation marks true, close quotation marks. So we've added filters equals true, we click update and then we're going to refresh the members directory again and see what happens. So as you can see it's added two filters, one for country and one for levels. And if you just wanted one of those to appear as a filter then um, you can do that. So um, let's do that now. I'll show you how it works. So I just want a filter for category. I don't want a filter for levels. Let's um, do that. So instead of filters equals true, we could have filter equals categories. And then we'll update the page. And what that's going to do is tell Post Table Pro to only display filters for categories. So you see now we've only got a category filter. So you can choose which filters appear, which is quite good. So I'm going to change that back to true because I quite like the filter for levels. And um, let's look at how the table is sorted by default. Um, annoyingly, I've, all my members begin with an S, which doesn't make it very easy. But let's say I wanted to sort them alphabetically, which is quite a common way. 
Post Table Pro lets you sort your member directory by any column or by other things like custom menu order or something like that. So there are different ways you can sort. Um, I'm going to sort alphabetically. So sort underscore by um, equals, and then I'm going to write title in quotation marks. And um, by default, that will sort in ascending order unless it's a date. So because I'm sorting by title and not date, it will sort it in ascending order, which is what I want. There is an option to sort in descending order, but you probably don't need that. So let's click update. And it probably won't look much different because they all begin with S, but the, it will sort it alphabetically. So um, that's an alphabetical order now. And um, another, so at the moment, you can click through to the single member page. So I'm going to click on Sam Smith's profile. And here it is. Now, this is the standard layout for a post, a normal post in my theme. When I created the custom post type, it uses the standard post layout. So if I have a blog on my website, then this is what my blog post look like. Um, in my case, it's added the date, it's added the title, the featured image, the, long, the main content, and also it's got a link to the next post. If that's what you want for your individual member profiles, then that's fine. If you want a more custom layout, then read the text part of this written tutorial to um, see some tips on how to do that. It is a bit more technical to create a custom template um, for a custom post type, but I have provided some resources within the written section of this tutorial for you. So that is your single member profile. Um, let's go back. So each of the featured images and the titles by default links to the member profile. If you wanted to make it even more obvious how to click through, you could even add a custom field called link or something like that. And then you could uh, physically insert the code for a button. You might have a button short code in your theme or something like that. You could put that within a custom field and then add a column with a button or a link in it to say visit profile or something like that. So you could make it even more obvious how to get to the member profiles. Or alternatively, some member directories do not have individual profiles. They might just have um, the, this page where you view them all in a directory with the contact details, but you may not want people to click through to the individual profile page. So if you don't want people to see this page, I'll show you how to do that now. To disable the links to the member profile, you go links equals, and then in quotation marks, uh, false. And I'm going to update the page and show you what that does. It's still saving. Right, refresh now. So I've done something wrong. Let's see what I've done wrong. I've done it wrong because it should be links equals none. If you do anything stupid like that, check the documentation because it's all there uh, written down as to how to do it. And you do have to get the exact wording. So apologies for that. Links equals none. And we'll update it. And we'll refresh the page again and watch these links disappear. There they go. So now we've entered the right syntax. You can't click on the featured image anymore and you can't click on the title. But unfortunately, this has also disabled the links for the country and the levels. And you might remember when I showed you the interactivity of the table earlier in this tutorial, um, we were able to click on these to filter by these different elements. If you want to have the filters, but you don't want to have the click throughs to the individual profile page, what you can do is change links equals none to links equals whatever you want to link, which columns. So list the columns that you do want to be clickable. So I want categories to be clickable. I also want um, taxonomy level to be clickable. So these are two columns in my table. So where we wrote columns, we had categories and tax colon level. So we've repeated that here to say, these are the two columns that we want links for. Let's update that and refresh the page again. So now we still have no links on image and title, but we have put links on country and uh, that one hasn't worked. So let's look at what we've done wrong. Um, not entirely sure, might need to look that one up. Um, but if you check the documentation, you can choose which of, <clears throat> which of the columns that could potentially have links uh, actually should do. 
so you don't have to have all of them clickable. So that's links. Now, as you can see, we've got a pretty good members directory now. If you can imagine if it had dozens and dozens of members, it would be really useful to be able to click on the countries. You could filter by the different items in the table. You can do a search. You can reset to view them all again. Tons of stuff you can do. And the documentation also tells you how to do things like choose how many rows, how many members appear on each page by default and that kind of thing. So there's loads you can do with it and um, it's a pretty good members directory. The final thing I'm going to show you is how to password protect this page. Um, a lot of member directories are publicly available. So your website might have a list of consultants who have completed your training, who viewers to your website might want to commission to do some work or something like that. Um, they might want to find a consultant in their area and you know that would usually be publicly available. But there are lots of member directories that you would not want to be public av available. If you're using a membership plugin to create a complete membership site, which has a separate password, a separate area for your members and they all have their own logins, then you can simply hide your member directory page within your members only area. So that's fine. If you've got that in place on your website, you can use that. And if you don't, if you just want to hide your member directory page, then all you need to do is password protect it. So we go back to the edit page screen and in the visibility section on the right, click edit and password protected. And just enter your password, um, something more secure than what I've done obviously, and okay. And it changes to visibility password protected and then you can update it. Now I'm gonna refresh my page and it's going to be using the default password protection form which comes with your theme. So if you password protect any page or post in WordPress, it will look like this. And uh, so if you want to change it, you'd need to do that via your theme basically. So if I want to get in, I enter the password I added before and click enter and that unlocks my members directory. So if you do want a simple way to hide your members directory from public view, then that's how to do it. If you're doing something more sophisticated with a proper membership plugin, then just put it within that section. And that's it. Now you know how to create the infrastructure in your WordPress admin to save your members and any fields of information about them. And you also know how to create a members directory using the Post Table Pro plugin and how to configure it to meet your needs. I hope that is useful to you and I'd love to hear how you've got on with your own member directory.